everyone and when, welcome back for part 2 of the still life uh, you are painting with Huguenel uh, Boris from Huguenel Boris uh, uh, fineart.com so like previously we are going to use uh, from the left to the right uh, some lemon yellow uh, and uh, uh, cadmium yellow uh, I like to use one uh, color a bit cooler and one color a bit warmer so that's why I use um, a couple of each color so that's the cadmium yellow then we've got yellow ochre and we have a cadmium orange a cadmium red, alizarin crimson a red oxide then we are going to move over, that's the red oxide again, it's a bit slow, sorry, because I'm going over with the voice that's the burnt sienna that's a burnt umber ultramarine blue, it's a French ultramarine cobalt blue, viridian green, sap green and ivory black on the side here we've got the titanium white and then I made just two grades of uh, greys so about four and six in power just to uh, grey down some of the colours uh, the medium of choice uh, here today will be uh, the liquid uh, light gel so to start with I put a coat of um, that gel, that liquid gel, in the same time I brush over the whole um, board to get rid of dust or any little bits that are uh, unwanted. You can also scrape it with a, a palette knife, uh, sometimes to get rid of some texture that you don't want. Uh, but it is important to yeah, brush it all over to get rid of all uh, little dust particles so you have a clean uh, surface to work on so this surface has uh, dried for a couple of days and because I use that liquid uh, gel uh, it um, it dries uh, uh, very much uh, in yeah, a couple of days um, that's a, a plus uh, because you can uh, uh, paint in layers so we left it at this stage last time so here to start back um, I'm going to darken now those bits who have not been painted over last time um, just with a little bit of my uh, mixed of uh, black um, burnt sienna just go over these uh, unpainted bits I don't, I don't want to cover them completely I'd like to to leave a bit out uh, my painting I think it gives it a little bit of um, of something different uh, but I'm certainly going to uh, gradiate it a little bit I do the same uh, down below I don't know uh, I, I never know sometimes I, I leave it like that sometimes I cover it a bit more with paint so we're just going to uh, move along see so here I'm gradiating it a little bit more Well, that's an individual choice uh, preference you do exactly the way you want to if you want to paint the whole background in one um, color you, that's what you do you know it's um, that's an individual choice 
now going over again um, with a little darker grey because as you can see there just next to the pear that was a touch too light so I'm going over it um, to adjust the background a little bit and at the same time I'm going to go into the pear again so as we saw in the previous video just to anchor this pair into the painting and to get rid of the hard edges on this side also you can see um, uh, the wall has gone black. I've changed my studio. I painted the walls black so I wouldn't have a uh, harsh reflection of the previous um, wall I had into my painting. It, is, um, it makes it much um, uh, more interesting for you as well. Um, so yeah, I hope you like this um, new design uh, so if you remember my previous video number one uh, of this video um, the walls were a kind of white champagne and um, it w there was too much glare you can see straight away here in, in the painting that you've got uh, very bright and true colors coming up there now because all we uh, we have is a dim light from the top <coughs> so here we go now I'm just uh, going from a lighter background from the left to a darker background to the right which gives you which makes it gives you that depth again integrating it in what's already there so yeah I brush into the leaves I brush into the apple and I highly recommend to do this it just sits better in the painting because underneath is dry if there is uh, something that you want to change or if you came in a bit too much you always can wipe it down um, so yeah that's the beauty of um, um, painting in layers so for still lives I um, rarely paint wet in wet or a la prima uh, rarely not to say I don't do it I rarely paint I like to paint in two or three sessions bringing the colors up working more on the shadows on the lights etc um, again that is a, a preference that I have on still lights um, I don't do this on my landscapes or seascapes uh, which I paint in a, a la prima style one sitting also called wet on wet uh, so this one yeah I like to uh, glaze over it and bring the colors out keeping all the details in the brightest bright for last So by glazing, I'm um, getting um, a bit more of the the gel, the medium, to 
uh, render my um, paint a little more fluid um, and less opaque as well in order to um, to glaze on top of what I've got already there and just to intensify some of the of the darks and some of the lights of the subject blending in the back I mean the back of the table as you can see again making the table you know slightly disappear so we um, we have that uh, depth in the painting <coughs> So just check the color with um, what's on my tablet. It needs to be grayed down. You couldn't ev could even touch the tablet if you would like. So, and once I find the color I want, well, then I will put. the color down Now is the time to work on those highlights. Again, just uh, like we did to start with, just put the paint down and then work it in. Um, diffuse it, soften the edges There the edge is um, nearly disappearing with the background as you can see. And soon when I'm going to mix both the edges together with a highlight and the shadow it will really give the form to the pair. 
and also darken the shadow and you can see that shadow is really dark it appears really dark got a little highlight on the right side of the pair there it's a little bit of a reflective light I do see it, um, I think I will come back into it I hope so anyway so now we just um, mix both together just on the edge there with a zigzag motion and a dry brush just to make it turn make the form turn there we are now we're adding a little, a little highlight there on the side more natural now having a little bit light in the shadow and having that um, reflected light on this side of the pair is What else can I say? Um, well, I hope you um, you're enjoying this, enjoying watching this, and I hope you are going to uh, give it a try. So we can see a little brownish um, tone on the um, on the pair on the bottom and some a little bit on the top there, is which I'm adding now by by just little bits, uh, which is the mid tone really, which is the mid tone and which gives it that form, um, just that um, transition between the dark and the light. can see how it makes the, the pair turn at the bottom there gives it a little bit more volume at the bottom as well a bit of roundness I've got a warm light there on the ceiling well actually I've got four um, 
lights at the ceiling um, and that uh, gives um, warmth to my painting there and in, in reality it is not quite as warm as it appears on the camera there um, but still it's nice um, a nice render of what um, what we are trying to to do here So we have that shadow from that leaf here, and it, it it does make it a little more tricky. It, do, it does, uh, it is a little more difficult to um, to um, give it that um, a little uh, roundness of the of the pair there. We managed to do it, but it is a little more tricky because it just breaks down um, the form there. Um so for that I have to um to get a bit more uh, uh, different tones into that shadow to make it a bit less solid in order to see a bit more uh, different color appear of the pair and and um for me to have a chance to um, have that pair turn there a bit but in the same time we need to have that um, the shadow of that leaf Let's um, put the highlights on top, wherever we see them. Stronger highlights. It's still not um, pure white. It's still uh, a white mixed with um, uh, my pool of uh, greens and yellows on the on the palette. But we are int intensifying. Uh, the lights a little bit there, turning the light on. <laughs> so now we go even lighter, really. Emphasize that light here. Yeah. So we are nearly on pure white there now. You mustn't overdo it. But you really can see now how the form of that pair is is appearing. Blending the edges a little. Okay, let's move on to the apple.
and here we are going to do exactly the same we are going to start on the dark part of the apple uh, so in intensifying the, the, those darks and uh, moving uh, into the light still trying to match the color as closely as I can here with the mixture of um, alizarin crimson and um, cadmium red adding at times a little blue just to cool it down So adding their reflective light as well. Which obviously I'm going to have to tone down a little bit. But we will come to that in a minute. If you have any questions, of if there is something that you would like to to see on my channel, um, just um, you know, pop it into the comment box, and um, we we'll see what we can do. adding a little uh, green there because um, we can see that little yellowish green uh, reflection here in, into the apple so that's what I'm adding now and all around the light as well uh, I believe it's a brain burn apple one of my favorites um, and they are um, red, green, with greens in them. Very nice, very sweet apples. Okay, rounding up here our apple with the mid tone. I like to paint fruits in my still lives and uh, some of my favorite fruits um, are uh, apples and grapes and that's why we see them a lot 
only because I enjoy eating them, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, they mean they mean something to me in my life, day to day life. So I do enjoy painting them. When I look at a, a, a painting, I, I like to I'd like the painting to remind me of something, to take me back in some time in my life and um, you know have a connection with it so there we are adding some highlights now to the apple now, as you can see uh, 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 the picture is the highlight quite big highlight there quite a big highlight so so I, I did put it there quite big um, And yeah, it looks okay. I could have gone away with a bit less, maybe. I don't know, but you know, I try to be true to to the still life, or as near as I can be. So yeah, coming back on now, uh, why I'm doing these still lives, you know, and, uh, and why I enjoy doing them is because because I enjoy enjoy my food uh, my background um, before I became a, a painter was um, catering so I um, I am um, what I, I believe a, a, a good cook um, and I enjoy food and food brings back memories I've got a big connection with food and I'm sure all of you do as well um, when you eat some some food sometimes it uh, just connects with uh, some of your memories uh, it could be with uh, the past with your mom and dad or, or grandfather grandmother something that you ate that you, it smell and that reminds you of them so for, for me food is a, is a big um, has got a big role in my life and I'd like to show that on in my paintings as well you nearly can smell um, smell the food so enough of that uh, let's go back onto that highlight so from the outside in uh, soften softening a little bit that strong highlight although um, keep it quite strong quite strong to mark that um, light coming from the top right um, and just bouncing off that um, the edge of that apple It is a strong light, nearly blinding actually. Nearly blinding. So just um, soften the edges. Soften the edges until um, well you're happy with them. Um, with your um, with your light. And then within the lights, well, you have some uh, of the um, natural um, tone of the apple. We have to um, to show in uh, uh, the overall um, painting there. Then you got those little dimples all about the apples which I put on now as you can see 
and just gives it that um, realism to the apple the darker into the highlights high lighter into the darker bits um, So now by adding all these fine details we can really start to see that that apple that three dimensional three dimensional uh, forms of the apple um So sometimes you have to go um beyond what you see in the picture uh, you can't always stick 100% uh, especially when you work with forms because you can't always have a form turn well you can but it's easier when you just apply um, what you learn about color to have a form turning then uh, staying um, true to a picture, a photograph, you have to change it sometimes just to make it look interesting. So there we go folks, stay with me, it's nearly done. I think we've got another 15 minutes or so to go. Um, I know it probably can be boring for some of you but bear in mind I do these for uh, beginners or intermediate people would like to um, you know have a basic of um, basis of um, how to um, you know uh, achieve a still life have some um, some direction to know where to go all right now going on to the leaf i'm going to um get those highlights in on the side there there's a leaf just behind the apple as we can see um i thought i'd leave it i'd leave it out actually it looks like i didn't you still can change your mind, you know. I think I should have left it out anyway, if I didn't, because I can't remember. But, um, yeah, I should have left it out, really. But then maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, we will see if I find out a bit later. Um, so, yeah, carrying on with the the... A uh, leaf uh, uh, above there. So try to find a, a green who fits in the painting as well. Um, as you can see, I, I, I haven't gone for that mint mint green that, um, that we can see in the picture there, or at least the highlight of it. Um, because uh, I'm not sure that would have been um, fitting there. So 
So working in some highlights. So this is a smaller brush. So if if you um, if you are interested, my brushes uh, are from uh, Rosemary and Co, which is uh, a, um, a British company. Uh, they set up up north um, near. Um, uh, I have to think now. Uh, they are. Uh, so set up at north uh, near Yorkshire um, I think I've got a video of it anyway if I if I didn't post it already I will post it a link to um, Rosemary and Co they have beautiful brushes and the brush I'm using at the moment there is a number six um, filbert of her a master choice um, and um, so these are hair um, uh, natural hair and they are I think um, if I remember well mongoose um, What else can I say? Um, I've always been very happy with uh, all the brushes I buy from uh, Rosemary. They are really well made anyway. They are fantastic brushes they are. Um, so yeah, uh, so it's coming back on the paint. I'm um, uh, putting in the stem of the pear here. is as we can see it's a, it's a very light um, it's a blurred into the background a little bit As I told you earlier on, there is a leaf as well. Can't see it very well at the camera here, but there is a leaf and there is the stem just um, coming behind the pear. And it's there just to, um, you know, as a, um, uh, an interest on uh, the depth of the painting. Um, so, yeah, these brushes are fantastic and uh, I highly recommend them they are really good price too compared to some brushes that you can get and I won't uh, mention any uh, make there but some known brushes who are half as good really I've been very disappointed in some makes um, which were maybe good before but they're not up to up to scratch anymore so yeah, Rosemary and Co. I think is the way to go. Alright, so now I'm going on to the leaf of the table here. I 
having that um, light going through the leaf you see uh, and projecting proje projecting as a shadow there very important adds a lot to the painting I love doing these. I love playing with lights in the shadows, in shadows in the light. It's all about. That's all about uh, the paintings. It's all about light and shadows. It's all the interest in the paintings. And the shadows are very important in the still lives. Very, very important. So don't uh, skim on the shadows. You have to um, get as much attention as you can into the shadows. The shadows are what is anchoring your subject. And if you get the shadows wrong, it doesn't look right so yeah it's very important so they were working a little bit on the grapes uh, here we go having a little bit that um, light um, that reflective light underneath the grape trying to draw out the form so these graves are turned to you so actually it's just at the tip of the grape there that we see uh, it's just the, the the top grape that is lays on this on the side here this one um, but the others are, are tipped this way so you know you've got the, that, that front there so that's why it is less um, less oblong and more round the front there getting that um, that dust that you find on grapes that um, um, fungus it's a fungus that's it I don't remember the name it's called mildew but I don't don't know exactly um, and I did a grape here as well which is not in the in the shot in the picture um but I added it there um again to to add a bit of interest and um yeah I think it works well having a grape there. So they're dark, they're black grapes as we can see and uh, they've got a movie um reflection and again a, a light blue grey um, dusting on top of them you know uh, putting in the stem
little highlight on top there's the cut there we are adding the little highlight um, diffusing it around there we are now oh, oh, we see we see uh, the scrapes appearing more and more again we don't need a strong highlight on each and every one of the grapes some are stronger than others we don't actually have to put it on each and every grape that very important shadow again here And then to really draw the edge of the table there we um, get it a touch lighter and um, at the right edge we are going to go very light and crisp in a little bit there we are <laughs> some highlights on the cloth let's really um, get those creases a bit deeper not to forget to um, soften the edges all the time don't want very hard edges there. Hard edges tend to come forward, so yes, we are on the front plane there, but we still don't want want some hard edges, but we don't want all hard edges. So I'm there now. Give it some texture. Marble the the stone bit, you know, that was my aim to have stone, stone top, marble top, whichever, just darken a bit the underneath there and really gives you that depth, that curve and that depth on the table, really comes together now, you know. So yeah, well this all is going to come to an end very soon now, <coughs> I um, really hope that you um, enjoyed uh, following this and I hope you are going to um, give it a try. It is rewarding, if you follow the steps there is no reason why you can't really get something nice out of your hard work and uh, remember practice practice is the key you know so now the highlights for last yeah, everywhere and we're gonna have a finished painting um, 
we will split that bit a bit So here we go. I hope you enjoyed it <coughs> and um, well let me know. Put some comments, get us a like um, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.